do that, do that, do that, that, that. Do that, do that, do that, that, that. Yeah, like that, uh huh, like that, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, yeah. like that. Do that, do that, do do that, that, that. Do that, do that, do do that, that, that. Why rap like that? Kick the facts like that. Spit the old school boom bap and trap like that. They like do that, do that, do do that, that, that. Yeah. New York City makes a motherfucking noise right now. Yeah, let's get smooth on them. So what would you say is one of your favorite memories of being in New York up until you were 15? Like what like 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 wow. run, run us through <laughs> what it is that made Mike Mass Mike Mass in Yo, New York. Let me tell you a memory that's amazing. One time my pops took me to a New York Knicks game. That wasn't a big deal, you know, New York Knicks versus the Cleveland Cavaliers, mm -hmm. you know. Shout out to Sean Kemp. Sean Kemp was on the Cavs when I saw uh. him. You know what I'm saying? Um, we went to the game. It was cool. My pops actually scalped the tickets outside. Yeah. He paid two fifty dollars per ticket that night. Where were y'all sitting at? Were, were, they good, were they good tickets? They were amazing seats. They were half-court seats. It was amazing. Now, we went to the, we went to the snack bar at halftime. I get to the snack bar. This dude comes up, he's like, hey, bro, do you want to be in a dunk contest? Bro, this was when the N1 was popping. Yeah. I'm like, fuck yeah, I want to be, well, I didn't say fuck yeah, but I'm like, fuck yeah, I want to be in a dunk contest. And Pops is like, fuck yeah, he wants to be in a dunk contest. Right. So boom, they take us, they walk us down the fucking stairs to the court. We walk around the baseline of the court. We go into the tunnel where the players come out. You know what I'm saying? I'm standing there, halftime bell rings, I watch... Can be, but trust me well. Alan Houston all walk by me. These motherfuckers are huge. You know what I'm saying? And they set up a little rim in the tunnel where we could practice dunks, all right? So I'm over here throwing shit off the backboard, doing windmills. These lame <laughs> niggas they had against me was doing some garbage ass shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was a dunk contest. They had like two other kids. So they pulled us to half court. They put, the, they put a fucking rim on half court. And then they had us all dunk. Now, I look to my right, and on the sideline is Spike Lee talking to Ice Cube next to him. Oh, shit. This is a real story. This is not a lie. This is actually facts. So it's my turn to dunk. Boom. I went up, did a fucking crazy windmill. I was like, mm, ah, and he was in. I looked over. Ice Cube was like, oh. I was like, yeah, nigga, what up, nigga? You know what I mean? Like, yo, so. Long story short, I won the dunk contest. I won $250 Target gift card. My dad made me buy all my sister's shit. <laughs> y'all better be glad y'all got them Barbies and Brats and all that bullshit. I got a baseball bat and a, and, a, and, a, and a mitt, you know what I'm saying? And that was the greatest story of my childhood in New York. I'm one of those people that believes in no regrets. Right. All right, because if there was one thing that I had changed in my life, then I might not have ever met you right. or Casey. Right. Papa Jones right. or Brittany over here. Right. Like there's a there's a very grand chance that that would have never happened. Right. So there like if I if I had a choice, I wouldn't change anything that ever happened to me. Right. You know what I mean? But if you had to change one thing that ever happened in your life, wow. If you bro. had to make one change in your life, what would it be? If I had to make one change in my life, it would be to have gone to an Ivy League school that I got accepted to. I, I got accepted to Harvard, I got accepted to Yale, I got accepted to MIT. So I think I possibly would have gone back and maybe maybe taken a stab at Yale or, or you know, taking a stab at Harvard and, and see what I could do with that type of uh, that type of formal education. Which my parents would have still lived in Florida, so I'll probably would have been back in Tampa. Yeah. But, you know, the people I met during my college years, you know. Like, shout out to T.O., you know, one of the, one of the sponsors for our trip, Rara Movements, like I met him in USF, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people in my life, so. But I would say that I think if I did get an Ivy League education, I think maybe I, I, I would have a network that would have gotten me to six figures faster. I feel like if you would have gotten an Ivy League education, you would have been Redman in High High. <laughs> people got to read about it cause it's worth a second or maybe more checking give a brother applause for contemplating operating in color of law and seeing the floor separated from the black and now I'm on a mission yet I still be hitting black and mouths witnessing and cracking vibes probably happening now I grew up in it and couldn't have been a happier child realize a young and been in daughters and having a yo 
What was your favorite TV show in the first 10 years of your life? Wow. Um, my favorite TV show in the first 10 years of my life. Um, wow, first 10 years of my life. Okay, okay, okay. Let me think, let me think, let me think, let me think. Um, I would have to say Rocco's Modern Life. That's not a bad, that's not a bad choice. But yo, listen, Rocco's Modern Life. Uh, taught me a lot of lessons about like the conglomerate structure of America and like the bullshit that goes with the DMV and like the bullshit that goes with marketing and grocery stores and marketing and shit like that. And and Rockwell Modern Life taught me a lot of things. It prepared me for Space Goes Coast to Coast, which was the precursor to Adult Swim. So Adult Swim to me is like the most influential cultural television channel show slash program of our whole entire generation. It has basically molded me and molded my entire crew of niggas. Like, Adult Swim is responsible for that. Run that mm, wine and pasta, cabinet in the zone, yeah. Sauce on the edge of my glass, design a posture. Of course, I'm ahead of my class and buy a lot, bro. Feeling like niggas is at the top, yo. Wine and pasta, cabinet in lasagna. Yeah. Sauce on the edge of my glass, design a posture. Of course, I'm ahead of my class and buy a lot, bro. Yeah, yeah. Abraham Lincoln on balconies at the opera. Fitted like a mobster, level two at the Oscars. Say two things that you could accomplish in your lifetime that you need to do to die a happy man. What would they be? Go diamond. Diamond. And own land in America. Deed land. Any certain amount? No certain amount. I want to own land that if they want to build an interstate or a highway, they gotta build that shit around my fucking shit. That's what I, that's one of my goals before I die. They gotta get out of your way. They have to respect the fact that I own the land and they can't buy it from me and then they can't do shit with it. That's one of my goals. Peace to the most. <laughs> if you could accomplish one thing with your music, what would it be? Would it be to, would it be, is it the whole uh, each one teach one philosophy? Is it you want to make some money and support your family? Mm -hmm. Is it you want to make some money and ball out on niggas? What would you say your your goal is? What is what is your end game? I gotta be honest. Maybe it's because I'm sus, but I want to create an album that is considered among the top five albums in the history of hip hop. All right, man. I'm Bo. <laughs> it's Mike Mass. It was dope. It was a really really dope interview. Because I feel like, that, like what one uh, one thing that a lot of people don't know is this is really like top two best friends that I have in my life. <laughs> you know what I mean? And all of these questions that I have asked are questions that I I personally want to know. Right. So we also got my man Papa Jones. Right. Top two ugliest niggas I could name. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's my boy though. <laughs> I mean, don't do that. <laughs> Sauce on the edge of my glass, design a posture. Of course, I'm ahead in my class and my life, bruh. Feeling like niggas is at the top, yo.